Hello everybody, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com on January the 5th, 2016. Reposting the live coverage, part two, of the press conference in Burns, Oregon at the Malheur Refuge. We are doing this in order to make sure that the truth gets out there. Mainstream media is not able to twist with propaganda, lies, and manipulate the public's perception of what the real information is that is coming out from boots on the ground. I would like to personally thank Pete Santilli and the many volunteers that are out there with boots on the ground in Burns, Oregon, making sure that we get the truth live feed in order to be able to get this message out and information out to the public. You will be able to find many updates, whether it be on freedomoutpost.com or whether it be before it's news, resurrecttherepublic.com, talk news. Many different independent media are trying to help get the real message out there. So without further ado, I will start the replay of the press conference. No, I said, see, look out there. How many miles is it from here to, to Burns, Oregon? Can anybody tell me I'm new to here? Yeah, it's like 30. 30. 35 miles. Man, that's a, I can't even see it. You know, I can't even see that here. One of the nice things about where we're at is that we're removed from population, from people, to, to try to keep people from being worried, concerned. We want people to be safe. We, we're, we're, we're neighbors. We want to be neighbors. Mm -hmm. Please, please don't. Be right, so, so, what do you accomplish by being out here, other than I guess having this this platform? Is that what it's about? Or what, I, 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 I think I, what do you think the government accomplishes by setting up uh, their their staging areas in the schools, Lavoie? Are you aware of that? That the government has closed the schools down to set it up as a staging area? They don't want to ask you that. The Twitter account, Alan underscore Bundy, is that him? Is he tweeting from down there? I don't know that either. It's great to find out. Yeah. I, I, I don't Never know. mind. Fine. You know Let's go see that resource. Thanks. Okay. Hey, um, okay. Bye bye now. Um, Be you careful walking down there. Come down and yeah, walk around. Sure come come on down. It hasn't changed much from yesterday, but feel free to come. There's one, you can just smell the libtardiness of this one guy. I'm going to rip his fucking face off, okay? He's a fucking metrosexual, huh? Wait till they come back up. Oh, yeah. Wait till that guy comes back up. I'm going to scrum on him. Why, what is that? Huh? This guy is, I wouldn't be surprised if the guy's on the freaking government freaking libtard payroll, okay? I mean, he was just oozing. I could actually smell it. It was like steamy libtardiness. You know what I mean? What does libtardiness smell? Huh? I smelled it. I wasn't watching it on a computer screen. Normally, we would watch it on a computer screen. Okay? That one guy? I'm telling you, I could freaking smell it. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys have to... You know what? I'm, I'm telling you, you need to come out here so you can smell the freaking libtardiness. <laughs> Okay. You, you need to come out here. The the liberally biased media. Is that cool? How are you? I'm just curious who you're with. Uh, myself. I'm Pete Santilli, radio talk show host. So you just do a blog or something on the internet? No, it's the second largest radio talk show host uh, talk show on the planet. Is that That's a actually a, oh yes, absolutely. I'll have to look that one up. I was uh, I was involved with uh, the original uh, Bundy. Um, oh, are you are you with Fox? No. Oh, okay. Uh, I was involved with the original Bundy Ranch episode back in okay. 2014. Good. What uh, what? Take a look. We're with ABC News. You're with ABC News. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Did, were you offended when I said libtard? <laughs> Is that why you stopped? Hey, are you are you aware of the Smith Munt Act of 1946? You know what Good that is? Good Do you know what it is? Did you know that it was repealed? Did you know that a portion of your wages now can come directly from the Pentagon? Did you know that? The NDAA of 2012 repealed the Smith Munt Act, and a portion of your wages now are paid by the Pentagon. Are you aware of that? All I can tell you is I'm going to tune into your show because if this is the content. It's it's going to be really fascinating. Yeah. Tell you, if you like it or not, and it's not sponsored by Viagra. Okay. Okay. All right. 
I'm self-funded. Mr. ABC. The smith munt Act prohibits the federal government from propagandizing and paying the mainstream media to propagandize. And in 2012, they repealed that. So a portion of your wages actually goes towards propagandization. I just wanted you to know that. You may not know it. Okay? Tune into the show. The Pete Santilli Show. Telling you the truth whether you like it or not. ABC, you know what I, I just, uh, yeah, you know what, when you talk to these mainstream guys, yeah. and you talk to talk about the smith Act of 1946, yeah. right. they scatter like right. freaking cats. I see that. Huh, did you see them scatter? <laughs> OPB, did you get that squared away about Clive and Bundy, by the way? Have you corrected your story? OPB came out with an early story saying that Clive and Bundy opposed what was going on here. Oh. He opposes Article 1, Section 8, Paragraph 17. Uh -huh. Okay, you guys. That's right. Okay, so that's how we roll That's here. how we freaking roll. That's the independent media telling you the truth whether you like it or not. And you know what? ABC wants to walk up with their whole freaking crew. I'll rip that dude's face off. Yeah. Seriously. With the facts. The smith munt Act of 1946 was repealed under the NDAA of 2012. And when I said that, they all scattered like freaking cats, okay? Hey, Mr. Barack Obama and your whole little communist regime that actually allowed that to take place, where you signed it and you said, well, we're not gonna use the indefinite detention thing. You know what? You're using the freaking repealing of the smith munt Act, huh? And I'm gonna tell the public about that. They don't know what that is. Huh. Barbeau is uh, being... Uh, no, but the indefinite okay. detention, everyone focused in, uh, on the NDAA of 2012, especially okay. all of our listeners. They really focused on yeah. that indefinite detention thing. Okay. And Obama says, well, the indefinite detention thing is there, but I'm not going to use it except for Schuyler Barbeau, of course. But he didn't mention anything about the fact that he wanted to ram the repealing of the smith munt Act of 1946 down our throats and take a bag of cash and deliver it to, to ABC News, okay? Mm -hmm. ABC News doesn't, they're not aware. Hi, sure how are you? I don't know if I should come over here. You look a little wound up right now. Yes. No, yes, in a very appropriate <laughs> way. No, actually, we... I'm not sure I want to... No, 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 it's okay. Are you okay with being on the stream, or you want me to turn it off? What's that? Are you okay with being on the stream, or... Oh, no, I don't want to be on the stream. Okay, good. Yeah, you. you know what? Okay, just to uh, show you, mainstream media is running from the truth. You could tell by the way that mainstream media from ABC knew exactly what Mr. Santilli was speaking about when he brought up the smith munt Act. You can look it up. It is absolutely the truth. It was repealed in 2012 through the NDAA. Even uh, international news covered that as they blocked that information getting out to the American people. It is very important to understand they receive a lot of funding. Mainstream media receives a lot of funding, whether it be from the Pentagon or from the United States government in order to promote propaganda. And that is what we in independent media are working very hard in order to expose, but not only expose, to straighten up the stories, to make sure that the truth gets out to the people. Each one of us are volunteers in a cause in order to help the people who are voiceless have a voice in order to make sure mainstream media cannot demonize great American citizens. Each person within the United States of America has the right to be heard, and the mainstream media consistently works very hard to control the narrative, to control what people are seeing, and to twist it into something that it is not. So, I wanted to thank Mr. Santilli. I will have all links in the box below. Please share this information. Get the truth out there. 
there has been a lot of disinformation going on around not only mainstream media, but also around different patriots around the country. They have been misinformed, and I want to make sure the truth gets out there. I am not uh, paid off. I will not be paid off. I will speak truth in a time of tyranny. There is no amount of money that anybody could pay me to tell my listeners lies. If I ever uh, make a mistake, I am very quick to make sure to upload, to report on it, and to correct that mistake. Wouldn't it be great if the mainstream media followed that same path? But they don't, because they live in their little illusionary world. They get paid high dollars by the U.S. government, by Big Pharma, by the corporations. Millions of dollars to sit on their rear ends and to put out the narrative in which the government wants to have. They have all the money in the world that they could want or use to be able to have a lavish life, not caring that what they are reporting are putting lives in danger. These people who are at Malhera Refuge in Occupy Malhera are good, honest, patriots, peace-loving individuals whom have families and are standing for other families you need to understand that this is not just about Oregon. This is just where it's starting. The federal government and the BLM have stolen the people's rights. They have stolen their resources. They have stolen their land, and it is all a UN Agenda 21 plan in order to be able to overtake the resources. They have taken over the resources to the point that nobody is able to thrive. And that is an important thing to understand, know, and acknowledge. Get this information out there. We need hundreds of thousands of people out there in protest. We must stand together because this is not just about Harney County. This is not just about one town. This is about the overreach of a federal government that is a corporation that is stealing the resources and making individuals go bankrupt, making food supplies. Um, lower when you're not able to graze the cattle for beef where do you think your hamburgers and steaks come from this is an economical terrorism and we must stop it we must do it in a peaceful manner and I can assure you, if there is any violence, any, it will only be started by the federal government. Thank you. God bless you. And you have a wonderful day. I will keep you updated as much as possible. I am working on many things to get the truth out there. And I do want to put for a note, the Bundys, the Patriots, the militia that are at the Malher Refuge are gaining popularity and support from the locals in Burns as well as the ranchers. There's a deeper agenda here, everybody, and it's UN Agenda 21. We either stop it now or we lose everything we have. And one day it will hit your home, not just because you're a rancher, if you believe 
and you have your home that you've purchased and you don't want the government to come in and tell you you can no longer be there because they have a right to take it and they demolish it, they destroy it so they can have their quote unquote wildlands. And if you don't believe me, look up and Google search the Wildlands Project map. That is their goal. And I, for one, am not willing to bow down and watch as American citizens across this union are attacked, stolen from, private property destroyed, lives put in danger by a bureaucratic pretend government agency. The BLM is not. It is a private corporation. And I will prove that to you. I will end that vi this video with a wonderful video that a federal judge is speaking out and explains exactly how the BLM has been acting at a CSPOA conference meeting. This was uh, dated in 2014 for upload, as you can see, excuse me, 2015 of January the 4th. This is an imperative video for you to see. Ramona Haig, federal judge, she exposes the BLM is engaged in criminal conspiracy across this union and it must be stopped. This was taken on Constitution Day, September 2014. Please listen to her words carefully as she explains what's really going on within our union. Stuart, Sheriff Mack, and everybody else who showed up in Nevada, and what we witnessed there in Nevada was a miracle. And uh, it is in large part because of what you gentlemen did, that they were not able to haul Clive and Bundy out. The intent was to haul him out in a body bagger and leg chains, and, uh, and any other protester that was there. It, it sends chills up the back of my neck to hear you talk about it. It was an amazing day. My family uh, it was in a very similar situation as the Mondays in 1991. We start, my father and mother bought a ranch in central Nevada, Pine Creek Ranch, in 1978. And from that point forward, when Pre President Carter was president, the problems with the federal agencies never stopped. And it finally culminated in a situation where they conducted a raid on our ranch. We had a, a Forest Service personnel who was under uh, deposition who testified that he had had a, a sniper rifle sighted in on my 16-year-old brother on that raid. And ultimately, my family was forced to go into uh, the federal courts and file a Fifth Amendment constitutional takings case against the Forest Service and BLM for taking our ranch. And that court battle still is, is ongoing. Um, we have had three major court cases in federal courts and also a water adjudication just to defend what we were lawfully allowed to do in the first place. We have over three truckloads, as I like to say, or over hun several hundred file boxes of court documents just to d defend what we were lawfully allowed to do in the first place. Our ranch is situated in very, very similar to the Bundy Ranch. There's a lot of confusion over this, this issue. It has about 7,000 acres uh, deeded land, and the rest, about 750,000 acres, is range land, whereon we have vested water rights, rights of ways, ditch rights, uh, fences and roads, and own those rights and have owned those rights since the 1860s when they were first appropriated by our predecessors and in interests. That's the same exact situation as the Bundy Ranch. So when the government comes out and says, oh, we're just protecting public land, well, there's a lot of private rights on, those, uh, on that public land, a lot of which is the water rights. 
And when you live that close to Clark County, you can't imagine why they might want his ranch. Um, they have been successful in running out 52 other ranchers in Clark County on alleged uh, purposes such as the desert tortoise. Of course, we all know it's a, it's a red herring argument. It's a Trojan horse. Um, it didn't take them about, 16, or about six years from when they broke those 52 other ranchers to start selling land in Las Vegas like hotcakes. This is the BLM. And uh, all of a sudden, they were no longer concerned about the effect of uh, excavating equipment and paving equipment on desert tortoise habitat. So we all know that this is a red herring argument and that they were, there was something there on that ranch that they wanted. And Harry Reid is very closely tied to this situation, don't kid yourself. And that they brought in 200 snipers to surround him and, uh, and do basically a land clearance and hopefully haul him out in a body bag. So when you, Stuart, talk about what happened down there, it was truly a miracle. Now, I want to um, address the subject in our case with respect to where we've gone. You know, a lot of people have uh, thought that Cliven was legally on a way out on the limb. He had very bad legal advice. Um, he should never have had those two court orders against him in the first place, in my opinion. But nonetheless, um, the worst we could accuse him of is either civil protest or contempt of court. But in our case, our case is very similar. Uh, we were filed with trespass charges in 2007. And they came against my brother and, my, um, and the estate uh, to seek, seek trespass charges against us. They had racked up a heck of a bill on us. Of course, it's all fictitious. The government and the Justice Department does amazing things with bills. But anyway, um, we ultimately prevailed in that case. We were able to be... Uh, our property rights were recognized, our vested water rights were recognized by the court, our rights of ways and all of the other issues, our forage rights. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're just trying to pick something for the stream. I apologize. And ultimately, um, the court f recognized those property rights in the Federal District Court of Nevada and ruled that the federal government had engaged in a conspiracy beginning in the 1970s to deprive my family of their property rights. He ruled that he found, or he found evidence during the course of the trial of racketeering, of fraud, mail fraud, wire fraud. He held the Forest Service uh, ranger and the BLM manager in contempt of court for witness intimidation during the pendency of the trial and the court, uh, the, of the court process. He told them to show up with their own checkbook to pay, for the, um, to pay for the damages that they had caused my brother. They had sent biz people whom my brother had done business with, had sent them to collections, sent their wives to collections, had charged assess uh, trespass fines against not only my brother but a number of people he did business with. And, uh, and so that was considered part of the contemptuous actions on the part of the federal government. So. When I talk about our case and the Bundy case, our case was very similar in this respect. The government has been in a conspiracy to drive the Western rancher off these rangelands. And the Western rancher is not a mere lessee. He has property rights out there. And that's the dirty little secret, in particular the water rights. So what we see here today with Cliven is, and with what happened down there is so important in the defense of our property rights, in the defense of our freedom and liberty. I want to address the issue of police power very quickly with regard to the federal government. There is a misnomer that the BLM, Forest Service, and most of the other federal agencies have any kind of police power whatsoever, especially on federal lands. They have no police power on federal lands. Every land law passed by Congress from the Taylor Grazing Act to the Federal Land Policy and Management Act all have reserved civil and criminal jurisdictions to the states. The BLM had no business out there with guns and badges. They could have easily have packed guns to protect themselves from a rattlesnake, but they had no business pointing guns at individuals. And the fact that Sheriff Gillespie completely went and hid under his desk down there and turned over the entire law enforcement action to the BLM was a travesty of the highest order. And if tarring and feathering was still allowed, that man should have been personally tarred and feathered for what he did down there. So I thank you guys for showing up. I called, my brother was down there during the course of this, and I was 
sending out emails basically and trying to handle the press side of it on from from our perspective in Nevada. Um, so I stayed in Reno and I kept saying, what about this militia? Because the press had hyped it up. What, and he goes, oh no. He goes, we feel a lot safer because those guys were there. Um, this was a spontaneous reaction that we had down there. This was not something where people were ginned up to show up and support Clive and Bundy. People showed up only after they saw people getting tasered, only after they saw Clive and Bundy's son arrested for standing on the side of a road filming the actions of the government exercising his First Amendment rights. This was a natural uh, protest. And I am so impressed with what those people were able to do, the courage of people who had nothing to do with Clive and Benny, didn't know him, and had the courage to stand down there and possibly take a bullet. And what we witnessed in Southern Nevada was a true miracle. And I want to thank you guys for what you did. Thank you.